chaos damage. Hey. I don't know if it's recording. I'm a professional. My stuff does not work. There it is. All right. Uh, first time we've ever done a podcast with our faces, even though half of this crap on my end is freaking blurry. Ah. <laughs> uh, it's no blur on my end too. No well, idea. it's gonna be no, throughout no, the whole no, thing. So, all right. Uh, welcome everyone to the Caravan of Stress Mackay podcast. Uh, this it's been a while. I apologize in advance. This is on me. Uh, I've had too much going yeah, on. We caused that we caused kill for the temporary itself. <laughs> that too. That too. Uh, anyway, I'm Brandon Sapp with Number Ten Brand Studio. I'm joined by my co-host. Big player or current. All right. It worked. Just pay. I didn't know my full real name. <laughs> there we go. All righty. Ah. Uh, Let's just jump on into it. I know a lot of things have been going on. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is Fallout 5. Yes, there is a fifth Fallout. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Fallout, it is pretty much like I'm a few... under a rock. Yeah, if you've been living under a rock for a few years or longer. Uh, Fallout is a futuristic kind of... Uh, it's basically out of scrolls with guns and radiation. Yeah. And biohazard and roaches. <laughs> and nukes. And mega scorpions. And lots and lots of explosions. <laughs> I mean, one of the weapons is a mini, du- is a mini nuke launcher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's accurate. That's accurate. Uh, we are coming to you guys off of a very long hiatus, like we said. Uh... Harissa, I want to get your take on this. What do you think of the uh, live-action Fallout episode show that we're getting ready, that's being presented? Uh, there's so many things they can go, they can do, do right, and so, so many other things they can do wrong. Yeah, yep. I mean, it's either going to be well, well received or it's yeah, not. set after Fallout 4. Yeah, yeah, that's accurate, yeah. yeah. Well, at least it ain't after Fallout 76. So that's like, what, the first game? Jesus Christ, I don't know. I, I don't look into I'm the... I'm not sure either, to be honest. Yeah, I don't look into the lore it's like I look into... The games were made by no studio entirely, because the first of the ones that created it was Interplay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Alrighty. And for those of you who aren't familiar, what do we... What is our specialty? Should I just say that I'm like the only sane man of the duo? Well, okay, so our our what we're spe- what we specialize in is fucked up shit and Elder Scrolls. All right, that's if that that's if teabagging a Falmer to some frickin' Zelda music. <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah, y- y'all know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we specialize in the Elder Scrolls, and I've been trying to keep an eye on the Elder Scrolls stuff for a long time. I gave up because, honestly, after so many years of broken promises and all that good stuff, you know, we we haven't gotten a full I mean, update. They're all about broken promises. Right. But what's funny to me is I've seen countless things. On, uh, on the on the Elder Scroll Six, all right. And there is an official potential setting for Elder Scroll Six. Y'all are gonna hear it here first if you haven't seen the IGN. Uh, the IGN. We are looking at Elder Scroll. We're looking at Elder Scroll Six being in Hammerfell. Considering that Daggerfall didn't do the entirety of the province, that doesn't surprise me. Well, now hold on a second. We've got Elder Scrolls Arena and Elder Scrolls Daggerfall. Which, if I remember correctly, Daggerfall's map size is bigger than even Skyrim's is, even for its time. I think so. 
Well, because it was open world. It was very much, it was a predate to freaking Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah. It online predates the series itself because then it's second era. Right, like, like I could pull up freaking Steam real quick and I could pop up freaking Elder Scrolls, you know, Elder Scrolls Arena and I could pull up the map and you've got damn near almost everything before, before there was Windhelm. Before Solitude became the, I want y'all to look at me here. Before Solitude became the capital of Skyrim, and before all Flark Stormcock decided to freaking start a civil war, you can laugh at that because it's funny. We had Whiterun as the capital of Skyrim. Interesting. White one, white. Over thought it was a good idea to just like dog the high chain. Like who gave? Like, only would give a shit. Turns out, you're wrong. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Like, give me a sec. I gotta switch my mouse here. <laughs> I've been switching my mouse in between two computers here. So, I'm not. I'm a. Every time I hear this, the phrase, that was for the door, that says, that's an Orient to me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sponsored or anything, even though that video. Hold on. I've got some specs here before, before we get on my. Uh, Elder Scrolls tirade. Some YouTube updates for you guys on the channel. Yes, I will go back to doing live streams. Y'all have my word on that. I know I've been absent for a while. Pardon the mask. I was doing rehearsals. Uh, I'm... <laughs> Would you be surprised? No. Okay. I mean, it's not like... I mean, come on, dude. You, you should know me. I mean, I don't keep that shit in public. Uh, you really think I would keep an actual Duh. skull in public? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Alrighty. So, hopping on here to the old number 10 brand studio channel. We have reached 150 subscribers. Nice. Took me for fucking ever. <laughs> and I am here to announce that the most popular... Y'all motherfuckers are perverted as fuck, by the way. <laughs> Y'all deserve to go to horny jail for this one. Serana Kibna- Hold on. Hold on a second, because this is going to get interesting. My most watched video. You ready to hear this shit? Sure. My most- This- Eleven thousand one hundred and ninety-three views. Some of y'all motherfuckers need to calm your hormones. Seven hundred and thirty-three likes. You want to know what the title of that video is? Isn't it crushing the zombie music? No. I'm surprised. Hold on. Serana kidnaps Dagoth or Dagoth Ur and tortures him. What the what the fuck? Y'all motherfuckers are nasty, you hear me? <laughs> I can hear those horny, but good god. <laughs> All want everyone wanting to be crushed by Serana's thick vampiric thighs. Y'all are disgusting. Oh, no shit. But nope, uh, I am also here to announce Dagoth Ur will be back. You guys have my word on that. I will make it happen. Dagoth Ur will return. He'll return with a vengeance against the fucking Argonians. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, <laughs> AI Dag... Oops. Mid-roll! <laughs> Okay. Got a little hair on it, but we're alright. Just on crazy, you sure. But no, AI Dagoth Ur will be back on YouTube. You guys have my word. I haven't been able to do it in a solid minute. Uh, you guys have my word on that for sure. Uh, I will say this though uh, I will be going back to live streaming on. Monday. I have a schedule set up for me for 
uh, live streaming for on YouTube. I've got me a schedule. Uh, we're looking at Monday afternoon. Lord Thor, the Adventures of Lord Thorius the Brute. He's coming back, and then we're gonna be running another thing of uh, Fallout 4, maybe on Tuesday. But definitely, we'll be looking at uh, Lord Thor, the Journey of Thorius the Brute, Part 2. Uh, coming Monday, Monday afternoon. Uh, actually, no, it'll be Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday afternoon, uh, Lord Thor Thorius the Brute will be back. We'll be continuing on that journey. Uh, I do have a personal announcement, if I may. Go ahead. Monday, October, uh, about said October. Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah. Monday, it's March. Now. Yep, March 25th. That is a Monday. Specific Pacific Standard Time, 5:30, 7:30 Central Standard Time, 9:30 Eastern Time. Ladies and gentlemen, for for 6 years in the making, DJ Dreamscape is going to be live playing his ninth album as a whole with two extra songs and he'll be joining another he'll be joining his first opening band on that day on stage for a song so be there I hope to you guys will be there I will be personally recording this set uh, it's live on Instagram I will link the account in the description down below I will also link YouTube okay this event will be recorded on YouTube. So all my YouTubers out there, y'all my YouTube fanatics, you guys are not being left out. I promise you that. So it'll be recorded live on YouTube. It'll be recorded on my other computer here. I mean, there are YouTube fanatics recorded on the main site and Google Earth or to fuck them over. <laughs> exactly. But just wanted to get that out there, and then we've got some more. I've got more shows, actually. DJ Dreamscape will be live on... Let me pull up my show through here. So, obviously, March 25th. DJ Dreamscape hits the stage. That's why this is back here. That's the backdrop for the video, or the live show. But just announced a while ago, the other day. I'm, I'm assuming you saw it. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. March 25th, April 15th, a show on April 20th. Mm. May 6th, and then we're doing a special one-off show, uh, playing the seventh album, Hex, all in full, uh, on, let me check my calendar here, I don't have it marked, but on May, uh, actually, no. We're looking at... Let's see here. May 6th. That'll be in Vegas. Looking at May 27th. It'll change, probably. But we're doing one... That'll be the last show of the tour. That The virtual tour, if you might, if you will. That uh, DJ Dreamscape's doing. Those are the five shows. Maybe just four that there that he'll be doing uh, I will also be in Las Vegas uh, through a good portion of May be leaving so the next time you'll see an episode a podcast episode will be and you have my word on this and you do as well mm -hmm. May 5th that's a Sunday May 5th? If I remember correctly, that's National Holocaust Day. April 29th? <laughs> April 29th, episode 4 of the Caravan of Stros Mackay podcast will be out. Uh, also, to announce, I will be running a internet radio uh, called Dreamscape XL Internet Radio. I'll be playing a lot of DJ Dreamscape stuff. Uh, singles, uh, stuff from the EPs, all the albums, 
hosted by yours truly. I know y'all miss seeing my lovely face. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, but how, how's everything been? I mean, I want, I want to get to the, I want to talk personal. How's things been? It's been all right. Recently got approved for SSI. Oh, there you go, there you go, heck yeah, social security, hell yeah. I think, SSI, social security, right? Yeah, exactly. There we go, hell yeah, dude. Awesome, awesome, glad to hear it, congratulations. Cat, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> um, uh, well, I guess for me, I mean, ain't much really been happening. Uh, I've been just trying to get everything set up for the show. That's happening on Monday. Um, I've gotten back into my art form. I mean, I don't know if y'all can see that, but I'm slowly adding black ink to this. Oh, wow. So, to kind of make it pop a little bit. Uh, yeah. So, I kind of want to want to kind of lead it off with this here. Uh, I think you you might you might have heard this story. I don't know if you have, but I wanted to read. I wanted to read a. I wanted to read a chapter, if I may. Uh, from the lusty Argonian maid. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just fucking with you guys. Hell no, you would never catch me reading that book out in public. Hell no. Well, duh, because there is politics. Right, right. Uh, I guess you know what. On the topic, of Elder Scroll. What's your favorite Daedric quest line? Daedric quest line. Shit. Good question. Probably the companions is the balance is deadly to elves. And now we're talking about the we're talking about Wuthrod, right? Yeah. Okay, hold on. You misheard me. I was asking about Daedric questline, like the Daedric princes, but I, I'll take that one because technically it is because you're because Hersey. Yeah, because Eastermore was basically a, because the Eastermore made basically made a patch Hersey. Now, hold on. Someone made a wonderful compare. I don't know if you heard this, but Leonidas in his 300. And Yisgrimor in his what, two? 200? 500. Yeah, Yisgrimor in his 500, Leonidas in his three. Put them in a ring and see what happens. Uh, because there was Yisgrimor have the numbers. I have a hard time determining that one, even with the numbers advantage. All right, all right. Because they know those birds are spears, but the companions have the foam. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're gonna shut up all my plants, but they'll be dead. Right. Alrighty. So, I, I don't know, you, me and you have expanded the lore of Elder Scrolls for, for the, these longest of times. Uh, I just want to know if you've ever heard of the Messer. The, Mer Merific era. Have you have you read into that? Some parts of it. In other words, bizarre because it is like living it is for the dumb dumber point in time itself. Right, right. But it was the the Merific era, meaning era of the elves in Nordic Pos uh was also known as the Mythic Era. It was the period of time Immediately following the Dawn Era, the Merethic Era was reckoned by early Nord scholars as a series of years numbered in reverse chronological order, beginning with ME25 and counting down with each passing year from the beginning of time to the founding of the Cameron Dynasty. Interesting. Uh, and the Bossmer homeland of Valenwood, which was recorded as Year Zero in the First Era. Hmm. And it is hereby. I'm gonna get my cat my room. That's fine. And it's hereby mentioned in only four Elder Scrolls games. I 
to get my cat on my room. You know that motherfucker that opened Paradise in Elder Scrolls 4? What? That, that pretty much employed upon itself with Oblivion? Yeah, Mancar Cameron. He was yeah. he was based in the freaking Cameron dynasty. How old would he be then? Uh, let's see here. Like we're on the same age as Man of Marco? It would have to be. No, nah, Man of Marco is old as shit. Well, because he's a witch. Way to go if they bring him back in Elder Scrolls 6. <laughs> I mean, how many times has Mother Marco been killed now? Quite a few, at least a bunch. Is he that hard to kill? Eh, not really. Depends on depends on what you use. Uh actually, okay. So I know we talked about quest line. Uh what is the most over you what is the most overrated? Daedric artifact in Skyrim. Uh, I want to say make people look bald because how easy it is to get it. That's accurate. That's accurate. For or Spellbreaker due to its usefulness. Yeah. Because it's a shield that can block magic. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the College of Winter Hold. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that, I'm using a shield! <laughs> Look at the shield of the world weight. A world weight in it, too. Yeah. I'd say for me, and this is just out of pure speculation because of. It's, it can be overused, it can be used repeatedly. I think you know exactly what I'm going with here. Which lo. Oh, oh, wait, what? Mine? I'm going with the Zura Star. Infinite Soul Gem. Case in point. Ah. Uh, that would be definitely overused because an infinite item is a is pretty much a useful one. Yep. You want to know my under? You want to know my biggest underrated one? And this is because. I have played Sky. We've played Skyrim for pretty much damn near about the same length of time. Have you ever? Have you ever gotten the Ebony Blade? I have. But that's my underrated one. I think mine is Solar Draw just due to its backstory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does have a very interesting backstory, I will admit that. Uh, how is it how is the Malakath saying is it known? Yeah? If I know correctly. How is the Malakath's possession is known, but it's of, dwar it's of Dwarven origin. Yeah. Despite its appearance. Drug is a unique two-handed weapon and a Daedric artifact that was forged by the Dwemer. Mm -hmm. Also known as the Hammer of Might, this ancient Dwarven, Dwarven Warhammer has appeared on multiple occasions throughout Tamriel in the last 700 years. Here we go. Here's some history here. The original war, the ham, well, Warhammer originally belonged to the Warkin a clan of Dwemer who migrated from their homeland of Morrowind. Legend states that the chieftain threw his hammer across Tamriel to proclaim his clan would settle wherever it landed. The hammer landed in the province of Hammerfell, hence the name. That's how Hammerfell got its name. Interesting. Uh, to, true to his words, the leader of the Rokin raised the city of Valenfell. In the capital of the Western Dwemer at the location. Nice. It has only appeared in the second era. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have ourselves some dwarven ruins in Elder Scrolls 6. 
Well, yeah. And during character in the Club World War, can you cause the entire species to vanish and then be under the guard? Yeah. Trivia, although Spellbreaker and Volendrunk, Volendrunk are Dwarm, Dwemer artifacts, Volendrunk's improvement is n material is not a e uh, Dwarven metal ingot, but an ebony ingot. In lore, this could be due to the design and build of Volendrunk. Hmm. Makes me wonder where they got the ebony. Right, right. Like, I imagine those ebony vines in Hammerfell, but like, because they had a time period where they got it, it's not person entirely. Right. Oh. Uh, this is an interesting. What to say next? According to Elder Scrolls Wiki, uh, Casimir is a unique weapon in Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition. It is accordingly here a uh, uh, Daedric artifact. Let's see here. That had to be forced in. See, now hold on. Aren't almost every single Daedric equipment uh, improved by an ebony ingot? What about it? Check this out. Smithing can be upgraded with, an arc with the arcane smithing at a grindstone with the following components. An ebony ingot and a ruby. A ruby. A ruby. It is also shown up in Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. I am curious about this sword. My curiosity has peaked about this sword here. Ah, here we go. The Casimir is a claymore that has been lost to time after jumping from one owner to the other. In Elder Scrolls III of Morrowind, the blade rests in a necromancer's cave named Ab Abanabai. The Nerevarine may travel there, kill the current owner for the weapon. Once the Nerevarine reaches the rank of Knight Protector in the Legion, Varnius Vantius will ask to retrieve the Casimir in order to become Knight of the Garland. The museum, the Casimir, and that is the uh, tribunal fact. The Casimir is one of the artifacts the Marine, the Nervarine may sell, sell to Teresa Art. Hey, a ram, a ram, a ram at the Museum of Artifacts in Mornhold. She'll offer them 30 grand of septums. Wow. A sword that expensive? That's like a cha ching! <laughs> Which is the maximum goal of gold she will spend on for one item. That is nuts. 40,000 grand acceptance for a single sword. Jesus. That is nuts. <laughs> yeah. They're missing one thing, and it is in the creation uh, quest line. And I think you might know exactly what I'm talking about because it came from Boethia uh, long ago, which is very odd to me and why it's not mentioned. I think you might know the. I think you might know what I'm talking about. Here it is. Goldbrand is a unique Daedric Katana featured in several Elder Scrolls games. Description, this magical sword is almost a complete mystery. Thieves tell the tale about its golden make and how it is actually forged by ancient dragons of the north. Their, cl their tales claim that it was given to a great knight who swore to protect the dragons. The sword lent its 
wielder the ability to deal fire damage to an enemy. Ah, uh, here we go. How the hell is it not mentioned, man? It's not mentioned along the Elder Scrolls V. Because it's a community creation thing. Uh, Goldbrand is a powerful... This is from Morrowind, by the way. Goldbrand is a powerful golden katana with a fire damage enchantment in Morrowind. It can be converted into the most powerful Elton Brand, which is, is, which is more damaging and has an added strength boost enchantment by completing a secret and obscure quest. Where the guy dated? Pretty much. Uh, from Elder Scrolls 4, this is in the third era. Gold Brand can be acquired by completing the Boethia quest line, que Boethia Shrine quest, Boethia's quest. It is possible, it is possibly one of the most powerful weapons in the game when its enchantment is charged. Using the Umbra Sword in conjunction with this weapon can create a deadly combo as you can use Umbra to, the Umbra Sword to recharge Gold Brand. I was gonna say, isn't Umbra a soldier itself? Yep. Ah, uh, nothing. Like Umbra is a soul gem that is also a blade. Yep. And then fourth era doesn't name Skyrim specifically, but we know where exactly the Skyrim came at. Uh, Goldbrand is rumored to have been wielded by Emperor Titus Mead II during the Battle of the Red Ring when he retook Tan the Imperial City. That is I imagine he massacred thousands of force for what that thing. Oh, probably. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's go Oblivion Enchantments. I know they've got a quite, quite the I mean, lot. In a serious backstory, a hyperceptum conquered the Severus of Isles. He's the fucking Dewidium to do so. Yeah. You want to hear about the Maroon's Razor in freaking Elder Scrolls V? That, that's a chance to, it's to kill a person. Yep, that's, yeah, true, true. Actually, there's a sword. I am looking for here. There. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Hey, hold on. I'm talking to myself here. Hold on a second. There it is. Found it. The Sword of Jigalag. I don't think it needs any more introduction than that. That's fucking shared. Uh, yeah, because Gigalag and Sugar are for the same fucking being. Yep, that is Uncle Shea. That is Uncle Shea Gore. Although it is of Daedric origin, it cannot be given to Martin Septim in the quest Blood of the Daedra. I mean, obviously. Hold on, check this shit. While Jigal while Jigalag technically wields this sword in combat, it is actually part of his character model, and his damage is considered hand-to-hand -hand combat instead. The sword will function as a claymore when wielded by the hero, however. Hmm. Hmm. Indeed. I believe the Grain Barge happened once in the era, I totally sure I could find broke that. I don't think it's know what Jigalag is doing now when we're the event of Skyrim. That's uh, Shea Gorath and he's chapped and he's in Pelag Emperor Pelagius! Pelagius the bad. My dear sweet homicide Leon St. Pelagius. One thing I didn't get first, so how Shibra Dr. Plagius, or Plagius the Pearl has been long fucking dead. You'd be surprised. Oh, here we go. You ever heard of Night? You ever I'm, heard? You ever heard the story of the Night of the Green Fire? I don't think I have. Fourth Era 42 in Sentinel's Refuge District. Altimer's descent, Altimer descendants fleeing the opposition, the oppression of the Almeri Dominion had taken refuge in Sentinel. However, they were attacked by Thalmor agents in the refuge quarters. Both sides fought with magical attacks, giving the event its name. By the time the Imperial Legion, 
the Imperial Legion forces arrived, the district had been destroyed, and the Ultimer dissidents had all been killed. At least there's some homework that don't believe in Homer's fashion from police. Oh yeah, trust me. Uh, the Markarth incident happened. I remember correctly, if you kill the Tomor officers, their DR will sit purposely sit to it. Thank you, don't for it. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so, for those of you who don't know, in the same event, if not almost towards the end of Oblivion, uh, well, actually a little bit after the fact, in 4E, uh, 4E 174, Markarth in the Reach was subjected to what was, what is known today as the Forsworn Uprising. When the Third Aldmeri Dominion invaded the Imperial City during the Great War, the Imperial Legion all but turned a blind eye to the other provinces, the native Breton people of the Reach, called the Reachmen, for those who had no idea, or Forsworn, depends on what you want to call them, uh, took the opportunity to seize control of the city, this is, was only possible as the Imperial Legionnaires stationed at Markarth were, were called to fight, <laughs> leaving the city vulnerable. The Jarl of the Reach, Hrothdir, could not quell the uprising and was driven out of the city. The rebellion was successful. The Reachmen ruled over Markarth and the Reach as an independent kingdom from Skyrim. From 4E174, uh, so about two years, so about two years, uh, to 4E176, allegedly during this time the kingdom was relatively peaceful, the Reachmen ruled their land more than le more or less fairly, and were making over turn over turves to be recognized by the Empire as a legitimate kingdom, others claimed that it was chaotic uprising and that Markarth's nobles grew desperate when the Reachmen refused their offers of peace. Uh, the White Gold Concordant happened. Pissed off the Nords. Yeah, it pissed off the Nords. Yada, yada, yada. It pissed off Hammerfell especially. Oh, for sure. Let's see if we can get some proof of documents. Uh, treaty terms. The Ultimatum Treaty of the White Gold Concordant. A large tribute of gold would be paid to the Old Mary Dominion, which started pissing off everybody. We'll get to the Talos. Yeah. We'll get to the Talos thing here in a second. Uh, the Empire would give a large portion of Southern Hammerfell to the Dominion. Pissed off Hammerfell. And here we go. Here we go. For you Nord players, this one's for you because this is bullcrap. Uh, the worship of Talos would be banned from the Empire. The thing of like they did it. The Tamil wanted to undo creation as a concept. Here are the concordant terms. Despite being, despite the white gold concordant being nearly identical to the ultimatum, Titus Mead the second agreed to signing it, and that's why the Dark Brotherhood assassinated him. A large portion well, of Titus Mead know what's coming. Ho! Oh, for those of you who like the blades in four, uh. A large port. This was the concordant term. This was the white gold concordant terms, not the ultimatum. Uh, a large portion of southern Hammerfell would be given to the Dominion. Talos worship would be banned from the Empire. The blades were to be disbanded. Dummy. Yeah. Yeah. Independence of Yulada's reform in the process. Yep. Let's see here. Is there any more laws here? And considering in the further wrestling, the course of Yulada's kind of suck at their job. <laughs> you want to hear this? Let's see. How, let's, let, me, let me check my minutes here so that way I'm not running over what I'm wanting to run over. Ah, hell. We'll run it over a little bit here because we're about ready to talk on the necromancy band of the third era. Ah. Yep. Uh, going about an hour and a half an hour? That's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, because I 
want to kind of go sit out there with my girlfriend and visit with her. I haven't seen her all day, except for lunch, but... Ah, uh, the Necromancy Band of the Third Era, more specifically 3E431. For those of you who played Oblivion, this was the Band of Necromancy that uh, Archmage Traven, I believe his name was. Archmage Tavern, Traven, ah, somewhere around that line. Uh, was the Necromancy Band of the Third Era was enacted by the Mages Guild per the new Archmage Hannibal Traven. I said, all right. The band was immediately to remove all traces of necromancy from the Mages Guild, although necromancy itself remained legal in Cyrodiil. It was effective for most parts, but dealt a serious blow to the guild that would come back to haunt it. Thus being why Mana Marco was brought involved. Uh, in the book, the, the wrote a book, The Black Arts on Trial, which is also in Elder Scrolls V. For those of you who didn't know. Uh, yeah. Dark Arts on Trial. This would appear in Oblivion and Skyrim. Uh, this would mark the Sigic Order from the Isles of Arteum, the precursor of the Mages Guild, which forbade uh, practice of necromancy. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, that's... The Sigic Order, can they make your whole island disappear from the nerd itself? Why do you think it took? Why do you think they popped up in Elder Scrolls V? Fair point. <laughs> uh, yada yada yada. Yep, yep, yep. So that's why the Mages Guild quest line took the turn it did in Elder Scrolls IV, which makes sense to me. Alrighty. Well, I think we touched up on a good subject. Uh, I believe so. Definitely definitely talked over a lot of what we wanted to talk about so I think this I think this has been a good episode what do you think worst thing for me there we go alrighty well I will mark this as done uh, any for after aforementioned words If anyone is interested in obscure games, try Itch.io. There you go. There you go. If anybody's interested in new games, try Itch.io. Uh... Without or Steam, since Steam and libraries is basically endless. <laughs> right, right. Alrighty. And I will leave off with May Talos guide your ever-loving words and wisdom and ro may your rose lead you to warm sand and this has been a good episode be sure to come hang out on instagram on march 25th and other dates i will be linking those in the aforementioned thing of the video uh or the podcast session whatever you want to call it and yeah uh this is brandon sap and spade fire uh, of the Caravan of Stress Mackay podcast telling you guys to say no to drugs and alcohol and yes to popular video games and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.